So in this video, I wanted to talk about the effect that inhaling helium has on the human voice. So we've all heard it. You inhale some helium and then your voice all of a sudden sounds funny. Our, I think our impression is that it's a higher pitched sound. But let's actually understand what's going on now that we've got this model of how the human voice works. So we've got our model that the voice starts from these vibrations of the vocal folds whose pitch is that that vibration frequency which determines the pitch has to do with how tight the vocal folds are and then that sound goes into the vocal tract and certain frequencies are emphasized and other frequencies are suppressed and those ones that are emphasized are are the ones that are kind of like the natural frequencies of this cavity so I want to start actually by just thinking about a very simple model of the vocal tract cavity and see if we can predict what are the frequencies that are going to be emphasized by that cavity. And so we're going to model the vocal tract as just a tube that's closed at one end where the vocal folds are and then open at the other end where your mouth might be. Now, obviously, your actual vocal tract is not a simple tube like that, but this is a useful example because we've already understood how to calculate the natural frequencies of standing waves in such a system. So maybe pause the video and take a few minutes to work this out. The input that you're going to need is that the length of the tube is 0.15 meters or 15 centimeters, typically. And the speed of sound, if you remember, is about 340 meters per second. So let's go through this now. So the way we want to proceed is first figure out what are the wavelengths of standing waves in this tube, and then use those wavelengths to figure out what are the frequencies corresponding to them. So for a closed open tube, we want to have standing waves that have a displacement node at one end, at the vocal, at the vocal fold end, and an antinode at the other end where there's a lot of displacement of air so that you produce a lot of sound. So if I turn this tube on its side, then a graph of the displacement, the longitudinal displacement of air versus the distance along this pipe would look like this for the lowest possible frequency, and then this for the next one, and this for the next one. And you remember, these frequencies for the closed open tube come in this one to three to five and so forth ratio. So you get the odd multiples of the fundamental frequency. To figure out what this frequency is, we need to start by comparing the length of the tube to the wavelength that you'd have for this wave. And so you see that this wave, as we've, as we've drawn it, that's only a quarter of a wavelength. And so if we have this wave inside the tube, then the wavelength for that wave would actually be four times the length of the tube. So let me write that down. So the wavelength for the fundamental is four times 0 0.15 meters or 0 0.6 meters. Next, we're going to calculate the frequency. So the frequency for the fundamental, that's equal to V divided by lambda, which is equal to 340 meters per second approximately, maybe a little higher because it's warm in your body, uh, divided by 0 0.6 meters, and that works out to 567 hertz. And then the other frequencies are this uh, times 3, 5, 7, and so forth. Okay, so that works out to this answer B. So 
Oops. Where did that go? All right, well, they vanished now. Um, so those frequencies, I'll just remind you, 567, 1700, and then the other one is around 3000. Okay, so those are actually just about the frequencies that I drew in this diagram. And one of the interesting things is those tend to be higher frequencies than the notes we're actually singing for the most part. Okay, so generally these vocal tract formants are emphasizing certain higher, for, higher harmonics and not specifically the fundamental. And we already saw in the last video that depending on which harmonics you emphasize, you get different vowel sounds. Okay, so back to helium. So we've kind of understood, you know, roughly where these peaks are coming from. And I should say that for that open closed tube, those would be very sharp peaks. There'd be very specific frequencies that vibrate naturally in the tube. But when you have something as complicated as your vocal tract, which it has all these parts, it's not a tube and the walls are squishy, what you end up with is not very sharply defined frequencies of sound that want to oscillate in the vocal tract, but these broader uh, regions that we call the formants. Okay. So to understand the helium effect, we want to think about the following. Number one, how would the helium affect the sound from the vocal folds? And number two, how would the helium affect these vocal tract formants? So you may want to pause again and think about each of those things and then combining them. Would the helium affect the pitch more or would it affect the timbre more? Okay, so let's discuss this. Let's start with the vocal folds. So the vocal fold vibrations really determine the pitch of the sound that we're producing. We understood that the pitch is altered by altering the tension of those vocal folds. So using the muscles either within the vocal folds or around them, we can control the tension or the springiness of the vocal folds, kind of like we control the tension of a guitar string using the tuning peg. And so if I replace the air in my mouth, in my vocal tract with helium, well, it doesn't really affect the tension of the vocal folds. And so we might expect that it doesn't actually affect the pitch very much. Even though the gas that's going through the vocal folds and causing the vibration is different. So maybe that's a little bit of a difference. Uh, it turns out that it doesn't have much of an effect. So probably if I breathe in helium and I sing, I'm going to go for about the same amount of pressure as I did before when I was singing with air. And so maybe from the point of view of the vocal folds, they won't really care whether it's helium rushing past or air rushing past. The pitch is mostly determined by how tight they are and what that natural frequency those want to vibrate at is. On the other hand, if we think about these vocal tract formants, the frequencies that are going to be emphasized by the sound waves going through our vocal tract, well, that is going to be quite a bit different because helium has a significantly larger speed of sound. So in the calculation we just did, the speed of sound came in here when we calculated the frequencies. And if we used a larger speed of sound, like the one for helium, we would get a larger set of frequencies. So instead of 567, 1700, and roughly 3000, uh, you're going to get some higher set. And so those formats are gonna be shifted. And as a result, the specific harmonics of our basic pitch that are going to be emphasized, those will be different for helium as compared with air. So, if we have the same pitch for the fundamental or the same fundamental frequency, but a different combination of harmonics, that means the pitch actually should be the same as before. And really it's just a different timbre. So let's actually try that out because I think when we think about helium voice, we think of it as being higher pitched than before. But according to this, it should be the same pitch, but just a 
kind of a different sound. It will emphasize higher harmonics more. So I have some helium in this balloon and we're going to try recording to hear what my normal voice sounds like and I'll talk and then sing some vowels and I'll breathe in the helium and I'll sing the same vowels in the same way and I'll talk and we're going to hear the difference. Okay, so here we go. Let's load up our Audacity. So this is my normal voice. Ha, e, u. And this is my helium voice. Ah, e, u. So it's uh, definitely different. But uh, you heard that it was really the same pitch when I was singing. So now let's actually have a look at the spectra of those different sounds. So I'll go back and we'll select this spectrogram. And let me choose the settings. We'll just zoom in a little bit here on the frequencies. Uh, go up to 3000, say. Okay, so one more setting to fix. A little bit higher resolution. Okay, so if you look at these are the three vowels without the helium and these are the vowels with the helium. So let's just focus on that ah. And so what you see is that the, the pitches are pretty much the same. Uh, so this is the fundamental and then the various harmonics. But what seems to be different is which harmonics are emphasized. So up here, you see that with the helium, uh, the higher harmonics here, that there's a, definitely a brighter line. And so that means that there's more amplitude for those harmonics compared to without the helium. And similarly, if we look at the ooh, then you get this bright region here and it's, it's uh, suppressed. And so basically this right here, that's a formant that's shifted up towards these higher frequencies. And so this is just what we kind of predicted. The helium doesn't have too much effect on the vibrations of the vocal folds themselves. So you get a, the same basic pitch, same fundamental and harmonics but the higher speed of sound in the helium ends up shifting the air vibration frequencies in the vocal tract. So the frequencies that are emphasized, the formats, those are shifted up to higher frequencies. And so we end up with the same pitch, uh, but a very different timbre that emphasizes these high frequencies. Okay, so just to summarize what we heard, we've got this picture that we had for the production of sound and singing without helium, we had a certain sound from the vocal folds, we had these vocal tract formants, the combination of these gives our final sound spectrum. Um, and then what happened with the helium was that the sound from the vocal fold, folds didn't change much, but the vocal fo tract formants shifted up to higher frequencies because of the higher speed of sound in helium. And so what that means is when you combine the green curve with the red curve, which determines the amplitudes for the various harmonics, then you get a different sound spectrum, um, which, which is kind of having higher harmonics emphasized as compared with the sound spectrum when we didn't have the helium. So a different timbre, but really the same pitch because these are all the multiples of the same fundamental frequency as before.